In Jesus name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. I pray for every one of my brothers, every one of my sisters, all our children, all our youths, our teenagers. Anywhere, everywhere now, I pray the victory will come into their lives in Jesus' name. All unseen forces in your life are conquered. All evil powers in your life, they are conquered. And with Jesus Christ, you become champions in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that this glorious, wonderful day you confirm your word in every heart, every life, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. Have you read Mark chapter 16 from verse 1? And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, that Sunday, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And he said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great, and entering into the sepulchre. They saw a young man sitting at the right side, closed, in a long white garment, and they were frightened. And he says unto them, Be not afraid, be not afraid. You see, Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, he is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter. That he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. And he went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre. For they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they any, anything to any man. For they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him, as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive, and had been seen of her, believed not. After that he appeared in another form unto two of them, as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told each to the residue. Neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven. Twelve minus one. Twelve apostles minus Judas who had died, who killed himself. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven. As they sat at meat and upbraided, rebuked them were well, beyond belief and the hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned i believe i believe I'm sick. And these I shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take off serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven 
and searched on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. Amen. Explosive power over unseen forces. You've seen the promise there already. Because Jesus rose from the dead. Because his power now circled the whole globe. And he said, All power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. And then he said, Because of that, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And then he said, Lo, behold, I am with you always until the end of the world. That's why we're here today. Because Jesus won. Because Jesus conquered. Because Jesus overcame. Because all power now resides in the name of Jesus. That's why today, when we stand in authority in that name, every unseen force, every unseen force, every unseen enemy, every unseen, every unseen evil spirit will bow in the name of Jesus. Three things we're going to question. Number one, the power of partnership over unseen enemies. The power of partnership over unseen enemies. Number two, the purpose of power. Everything that God does, He does for a reason. There is a purpose why He has given us this power. The purpose of power over unseen enemies. Number three, the power of prayer over unseen enemies. When the people of God stand up to pray, Understanding what Christ has accomplished on the cross of Calvary. Understanding the meaning of the power of resurrection. When we stand with that understanding of the power of resurrection. And we pray in the name, the glorious name of Christ. What awesome great power resides in that name. The power of prayer. Over unseen forces, unseen enemies. Number one, the power of partnership. To start with, we're now partners of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you realize the power we have, the authority we have, just being associated with Christ. The power of partnership in Ephesians chapter 2. Reading from verse 1, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. First of all, he tells us what we were. And then he tells us who we are now. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you, as he quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience he said this is what we were we were dead in sins and trespasses we were being directed in place and controlled by the prince of the power of the air that's before we tasted the power of the cross. That's before we tasted the power of the resurrection of Christ. It says in verse 3, among whom also we had, we all had our conversation in times past, times past, times past. In the laws of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others are in the past tense. Then he now tells us, after the crucifixion, after the victory of Christ through the cross, now he tells us, after the resurrection, after the power that rolled away the stone, after the power that made Jesus Christ to come out of the grave, after the power of resurrection that then 
spread all over the people that believe. Paul the apostle said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Verse 4, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love where we still loved us even when we were dead in sins has quickened us together with Christ partnership with Christ partnership with Christ he has quickened us together with Christ by grace are you saved and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That partnership with Christ, the togetherness with Christ, then gives us a kind of power over evil spirits, evil powers. Let me show you an illustration. For Samuel chapter 5. For Samuel chapter 5. The power of partnership. Just the very fact that we're seated together with him. Just the very fact he's seated together with us. Just the very fact he's close by. Even when we're not praying. Just being together with Christ. Look at the implication of that. For Samuel chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1. And the Philistines to the ark of God. This is symbol, a representation, a type of Christ. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon. That's a representation of Satan, Dagon, Dragon. And search it by Dagon. And when day of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. Give me a good hallelujah. <laughs> there was no priest there. There was no high priest there. There was no prayer warrior there. There was no Levites there. There was no Israelite there. Just the ark of God. And they said that ark of God in the temple of Dagon. Just the ark. The presence of the ark. By the time the people came in the morning, Dagon was falling down. The very fact that Jesus is present in your life, Satan has fallen. Evil spirits are falling. Just the very fact to a child of God. And you have partnership with the Almighty God and with Jesus Christ. Satan will not have any victory in your life. They will fall. They will fall. All your sin enemies in your life, they are falling already in Jesus' name. But the people are not learning their lesson. They didn't understand. They thought this is accidental. You know, when they see the victory in your life, oh, they say that's accidental. When you see the prosperity in your life, or you say that's like you will soon lose it, that's accidental. When you see that now the joy of the Lord is the strength of your life, they say that's accidental, that's just for one day, you'll soon lose it. This one you are getting, you will never lose it. This victory you have got, you will never lose it. You will trample upon all your sin forces, all your sin enemies in Jesus' name. And they took Dagon. They had to take him. They had to help him. You know, a god, they have to help. That's not a god. That's an idol. That's an idol. And all those, you know, they need to do ritual. They need to do sacrifice. They need to do this and that. We don't do any sacrifice. We just come here with our Bible in our hand, or the word of God in our mouth, with faith in our heart. We just stand. We don't do any ritual. Do you do ritual? Do you do sacrifice? We just stand like this. We don't have to roll on the ground. Do you roll on the ground? I will say, in the name of Jesus and all the power of resurrection that came on that first Sunday, in and then that Sunday morning, all the power. When you mention that name, every scene, all the people just fall down like this. Don't you remember when the angels came from heaven to roll away the stone? We're told all those people, the guards. Not our guards, their own guards. 
I said their own guards. They fell to the ground. They will fall to the ground. And then in verse 4, And when they arose early, on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was falling again on his face to the ground. Before the ark of the Lord, this time the head of Dagon, both the palms of his hands were cut off. Their hands are cut off. Yeah. Upon the threshold, only the storm of Dagon was led to him. Therefore, neither the prince of Dagon, nor any that come into Dagon's house, tread on the threshold of Dagon uh, in Ashdod until this day. We don't even need to talk about them again. They are gone. Yeah. We have forgotten them. Because we're told in First John, First John chapter four, First John chapter four, verse four: Ye of God, little children, those people of God, where are they? Where are they? Let Satan see that hand. Let Almighty God see that hand. Ye of God, I said, ye of God. You know, it even says little children, and some of you are not little children, you are not newcomers, some of you are just big men and big women, and your fathers and mothers, thank God you have God. And it says, and you have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No worry, no anxiety anymore, no fear anymore. This uh, evil power belonging to the unseen forces, unseen enemies, they are destroyed even today. Point number two, the purpose of power over unseen enemies. What's the purpose? As the Lord gives us the victory, and He makes us to enjoy the power, the victory coming